I don't love baseball cards. Got them, got them, need them, got them, got them, got them, need them, got them, need them, need them, got them, need them, got them, got them, need them. Welcome to another episode of Remember the Great Sports. Well, it's that time of year, yard sale season. One of the favorite things that I enjoy is usually at the end of summer, early fall, uh, there's a lot of yard sales. Well, in this particular video, I'm going to share with you one of the most massive hauls, not just in size, but sheer volume, I guess you would say, of items that I picked up at a yard sale for one low dirt price. Okay, so normally I don't share comic book pickups in this video. I usually try to focus on uh, sports cards. Um, I usually don't share too many video game things either in my videos because I'm trying to focus on sports. However, the comic books have a thing in common with my channel. Some of them are autographed. So being the fact that they're autographed by a pretty big celebrity, mind you, um, that dabbles a little bit in, comic, in the comic book world, um, I think you're going to enjoy this video. Um, I apologize in advance uh, if the camera gets shifted a little bit or a little bit blurry. I just have so much stuff that I want to share with you that it might not be the best camera work uh, that I've done. Let's put it that way. So with that being said, I'm going to start, I think, with the comic books and the autographs and the lot. And then we'll go from there. All right, so I wanted to zoom out so you could see the enormity of these items. The first thing that I'm going to share with you, the first thing that caught my eye, I guess you would say, at this, at this, at this garage sale was that this gentleman had his toys set up. Meaning he had a Hot Wheels um, set up, and around his Hot Wheels get up, up, it was like up on a workbench. I almost should have took a picture of it. I should have asked him to now that I think about it. Uh, he had various action figures like He-Man, Rambo, some G.I. Joe figures, and they were like almost officiating the race. It was so cool. If I was a kid, or if I was this... Uh, this guy's kid, I would be out in the garage playing all the time with dad's toys, but I'm not here to talk about somebody's man cave. I'm here to tell you about what he was letting go out of his man cave. So the first things that caught my eye were the famous TV show, The Walking Dead, and these are Compendium 1 and 2. And if you don't know about these, these are basically the collective volumes of all the Walking Dead issues and I'm not really sure I haven't read them yet but I am very eager to do so but yeah this this is volume 2 and this is volume 1 and you can see the retail price on these things is not cheap where'd they go I know I saw it on here somewhere yeah $59.99. That is crazy. The retail value of these, $59.99. Now this one has issues 1 through 48 in it. And this one has issues, I just had it, 49 through 96. So essentially, this is 1 through 96 of The Walking Dead in comic book form. So these are the first things that caught my eye. So I walk up to them and they had a whole stack of comics. These caught my eye. I said, oh, Walking Dead compendiums. What do you want for those? Well, uh, you know, well, give me five bucks a piece for them. I'm like, five bucks a piece? Sold. You know, these things retail for 60 and you can, of course, find them used for half the price. You know, you can find them for 30, you know, 20, 30 bucks on eBay probably. But I'm like, for 10 bucks for the pair, how can I pass that up? Well, if you're an AMC fan, not only did he have that, but he had Preacher Book 1, 2, and 3. So, again, this is the collective works of 
preacher. And this is basically essentially issues 1 through 33 of preacher. And I said, well, what do you want on the preacher books? Eh, well, since the Walking Dead's are five, how about, how about two or three bucks a piece? I'll sell, uh, tell you what, I'll sell them all to you for two bucks a piece or three dollars each. How's that sound? I said, okay, I'll take them all. No problem. Six bucks. Well, I'm like, well, you got any more comics? And he's like, yeah, look right over here. And this is where things get interesting, okay? So, I focus on, I'm going to start at the top here. And there's another um, thick book or trade paperback, and it's bound. You know, it's you know, it's a Batman '66 meets the Green Hornet. So I said, "Well, what's this?" He said, "Oh, well, that is signed by Kevin Smith, the Kevin Smith of Jay and Silent Bob." He said he he, he did that comic. Uh, also, Ralph Garman, you know, signed it as well here on the cover, and this is actually signed by Kevin Smith. I said, okay. Well, he's like, oh, well, you, you Kevin Smith fan? I said, well, you know, sort of. I mean, it's Kevin Smith. Who doesn't like Silent Bob? So, I, you know, then we talked about how their new movie's coming out and everything like that. He said, well, um, I went to the comic shop you know, that, that's on the TV show on AMC. I actually went to New Jersey, and he was there one time, and I bought these. This is also written by Kevin Smith. And Kevin signed every single issue, one through six. And also, if you notice in the corner there, Walt Flanagan was one of the authors also, who's also on the show Comic Book Men. So all six of these are signed by Kevin Smith in addition to this. So, here's, <laughs> it's get, it gets better. So my wife is looking around, and I'm going to pull this out and just kind of lay it on top of the table here the best that I can. And she's like, oh my gosh. I had this when I was a kid. And my wife pulls out out of the corner the Miracle Piano. And if you don't know what the Miracle Piano is, is this actually was the piano that was packed in with the Nintendo game Miracle Piano and my wife had this when she was a little girl and when she had a Nintendo she plugged this in and she learned how to play the keyboard so I turned to my wife I said you want that don't you she's like of course I do so I turned to the guy I said what do you want for the piano <laughs> he's like eh five bucks so for five bucks, we got a Miracle Piano, and there's a couple pieces missing. The power, the power box was with it, but my wife said that there's like some foot pads that go with it, and she said that was not there. However, for five bucks, I said, dear, it's five bucks. You can't be too picky. So I asked the guy, I said, does it work? He's like, yeah, go ahead and plug it in right over there. We're in a guy's garage. So my wife goes into the corner, and she's like a like a ten year old kid basically, and she plugs this in, and she is playing the piano in the corner of this guy's garage, testing it out. Now, unfortunately, I want to say she said one of the keys or something was sticky, like it, one of the keys was broken or whatever. So while my wife is playing this piano, I'm trying to deal with this guy, and I said, okay, so now I'm on the hook for five dollars more. So. What do you want for the comic books? You know, the Kevin Smiths, you know, comic books as well. And, you know, now we're, you know, we're at 17 bucks. He's like, I'll tell you what. 
I'll give you all the Kevin Smiths. I'll give you all the all the comics here, if you'll take all my comics. And I'm like, well, what else you got? So he pulls these up. He pulls Man Nova number twelve, and Amazing Spider Man number fifty, and that's the new series. Uh, Venom with the Punisher. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And you guys know how big of a fan I am of them. And an almost, it looks like issue one is missing. And I, I remember getting a cop, copy or two of these when I was a kid. But a two through eight of Reed Fleming. And he was asking 20 bucks for just the Reed Fleming. And I don't have number one. And there's an actual bonus in there of the flaming carrot versus Reed Fleming. So he said, okay, how about all the comic books, the keyboard, everything, 30 bucks. Everything for 30 bucks. He wanted $20 just for that. These Walking Dead compendiums are worth like 60 bucks each. He's like, give me $30 for all the comics and the keyboard. And I said, well, while I'm at it, I'm going to ask. And he's like, what's that? Well, I collect baseball cards too. <laughs> he's like, really? I'm like, yeah. He's like, well, give me a second. I don't have much. This guy was around my age. He's like, I don't have a lot <coughs> out here. But I have some that I haven't even gone through. You know, I don't know what's in them. You know, I've had these since I was a 10-year-old kid. And I said, I understand. I mean, if you don't want to sell them, I, I completely get it. You know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm the same way. You know, if you don't want to, if you don't want to get rid of them, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll completely understand. He's like, oh, no, no, I'll sell them to you. So he walks over to his workbench. And he pulls out. A box of Whitman's, you know, like the chocolates. I'm like, okay. He's like, here you go. Well, as you can see, you know, these aren't anything special. You know, 90s, whatever. You know, nothing, nothing too exciting here. You know, there's even a couple and some sleeves here, but they're not, they're not anything to get excited over. There's a Lenny Dykstra promo card. Woo! So, uh, he pulled that out, laid it down, and then he pulls two, I guess they're puzzle tens, I guess you would call them. I'm just going to move this to the side. He opens it up, says, well, there's some more. And again, there's a Patrick Ewing. I mean, nothing, nothing special. I haven't even looked through these. You know, Moses Malone, George Murishan rookie, Tony Kukoc. You know, so you can obviously tell these are his from when he was a kid. You know, because I have a lot of these. And I said, yeah, I got a lot of these out in my garage. <laughs> so he grabbed that tin. Then he pulls out another tin of cards, which is pretty much the same, same ilk. You know, some of these are in sleeves, but, you know, there's there's a Fred McGriff in there. You know, nothing. You know, so I didn't I didn't shovel through them. I mean, I could tell just by looking at these that these weren't anything. So, then he pulls this out. <laughs> and he's like, I've had this since I was a kid. And I'm like, oh, baseball album. That's pretty cool. I said, that's, you know, it's, it's you know, simulated leather or whatever. And then he opens it up. And inside is his Kansas City Royals. Kansas City Royals collection, basically. Of every Kansas City Royal, you know, being that it was his favorite team from the 90s. And on this side were the Kansas City Chiefs. Now it looks like a team set, actually. But... Aside from the uh, aside from the uh, cards in the album, 
I thought the album itself was unique and cool. I mean, this is like a photo album, but it is for baseball cards. And I'm like, that is like the awesomest thing I've ever seen. I said, I, I want that, not for the cards, but just because it's a baseball card album, like the photos. So he said, you know, I really haven't gone through these. I don't know if there's anything good in them. You know, I could tell just by looking at them that they were, you know, junk wax era cards, more or less. And he's like, I'll tell you what, we already agreed on 30 bucks. He said, if you want all the cards, five bucks. I said, well, for five bucks, man, I'm not going to nickel and dime with you and, you know, uh, tell you that you probably already know that these aren't really worth much. But I said, you are giving me the tens with the cards in there. <laughs> you know, those are worth a buck. I can store something in them after I take the cards out. You know, the baseball card album itself, I'm going to put that to use. I just don't know what I'm going to put in there yet. I probably will take the Royals cards out, but... You know, maybe I'll put some uh, St. Louis Cardinals in there or something, you know, from my childhood or some of my favorite cards from my childhood from the 80s or something. You know, nothing too valuable, but at least those cards that uh, were uh, historically important to me, I think I might put in this album. You know, and I'm not talking anything of real value. I mean, at most, maybe a $89 Griffey or something. But... uh very cool to get all this stuff so in total i only paid 35 dollars for all of the cards that i showed you all of the comic books with eight or seven kevin smith autographs i mean that's the amazing part i now have in the possession of seven kevin smith autographs which is really cool. And of course, the Miracle Piano. And I'm just going to hold, hold that up there. So, it took up a lot of space in my house to bring all this stuff home. And I'm pretty eager to get into reading The Walking Dead compendiums. Um, I really enjoy the show. Uh, obviously, uh, they just showed the first episode after I, uh, just a couple days ago. Um, and this is a very cool setup, I guess you would say, that I basically offered this guy an amount and we agreed on it. And I walked away with all this stuff. Now, unfortunately, I'm going to have to go through all these cards, see if there's somebody that I need out of them, you know, do my through the mails, you know, and uh, kind of get all the find a place for these comic books because I'm kind of running short on space for those as well. So again, thank you for joining me for another episode. I'm very happy to grab all these items at the yard sale for $35. I think I did pretty good, especially with Kevin Smith autographs in the, in the bundle. So tell me what you guys think. I appreciate you taking the time to watch. And as always, happy collecting.